Hey, Trolls is here with another video to add to the pile of Doomer content out there right now. So, I haven't really played Black Desert Online for about two years. I took a break and returned uh, near the end of February. Uh, I haven't seen many new players make videos talking about the current state and what it feels like to be a returning player. And, you know, I've never really seen myself as like a content creator or anything like that. I put some guides out there to help people out and made a little Twitch community and really enjoyed interacting with everyone that played the game, right? I'm someone who has played Black Desert Online since it came out in KR and has just really enjoyed the world. Like, it enjoyed what it was, what it meant to play it, what it felt like just to log in and see your friends and have a guild and have that community and that strength talking to one another and getting into little guild beefs and starting wars with rival guilds and getting called to GVG and then end up like decking on whatever node they went to like we, we, we would put the the tent down like you would camp out the spot to see who was putting their their tent down and then there'd be spies and people would be flaring to figure out what guilds dropping where so that they could drop on them because they're a rival guild like that was nuts dude like if anyone played anyone that played back then knows how crazy that was and honestly as someone who's taken a break for you know, two years now this is my longest break, like by far. You know, it was maybe a month here or there. But as someone who's taken a giant break of this length, I have no idea how long that's like been dead, or if maybe it only happened after the open world as well as the node war changes. If maybe that's when it also died. But from everything that I'm hearing and seeing in the community, it's it's nothing even remotely close to what it is before. You know, I, I've participated in the new war system, but I haven't done territory war in like three, two, two, three years, right? So I, I honestly don't know what the system is for that. But as someone that's like returning to the game and like wanting to get back into that siege PvP and like going to that experience and then watching, you know, Blue Squadron's videos or Fake Uni's videos, Choice's videos, um, all of these people that are talking about the game, talking about the current state and just hearing, you know, well-deserved criticism of the game. That's kind of why I'm, I'm making this video, turning the player's perspective. It's a, I feel like that's a very important point of mine because almost everyone in the MMO community has touched BDO. Like, they've tried it, maybe got into it for only a couple weeks, other people, months and months, some years and years. And there's a lot of players like me who are coming back into the game, taking an objective look at the game, and then seeing what the environment's like, seeing what the community's like, and seeing what has changed within the game to make the determination of like, hey, am I going to give BDO another shot? Am I going to try out this game again that, you know, at one point was my life or you, you loved this game, you know, it was your game. Because to be entirely honest, back in the day, I was a college student that didn't have a job. I was only doing, I think, half time or three quarters time I had a whole bunch of free time on my hands and this game just allowed you to be totally sucked in and I was happy for it to do so I started out in a guild called Waifu Hunter we ended up merging into Gravity right before the server merge and then we ended up winning the Valencia War for like the biggest war at the time the siege and we all got a title and it was really cool and then eventually you know all the tamers and ninjas and kunoichis all short sword classes were kicked from Gravity and that was what was pretty much needed at the time but that whole grind to get from one guild to another or building your guild up to the point where you can merge into another big guild, like that experience, that fun, that's why you went and you ground in circles for hours. That's why you did it. Like the reason that you went to grind was to get better gear so you could join bigger, badder guilds and defend your spot and fight for your resources and have a blast playing the game. That was BDO. That was BDO's core. That's what Pearl Abyss built from the ground up day one since the game released. It built that community that wants to play that game. They want to grind. They want to get beaten down so that they can get up again and just do the same thing to the person that used to beat them down two months ago because they're working a full-time job and you're a 20-hour-a-week KFC worker and you're just 
trying to play Black Desert Online, min max your whole life, and your whole paycheck goes towards crime boxes. Like, if that, you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, to an extent, there was a period where it was kind of like that, right? Where now everyone has enough silver where it's capped, right? Like, that's not how Pearl Abyss is getting their money. Um, well, I'd say that, but they released the Sovereign Weapons, that it kind of is how they're getting their money, right? Um, but my point is, if, if you want people to spend that money, right? Like, NA, EU, we're like, what, 70% of the market share? If you want people to swipe their credit cards, you have to give them a reason to swipe for their credit cards, and it's not increasing the price of crowns, it's not increasing how many crowns you get per outfit, or how much outfits sell for on the marketplace. That's all artificial, it changes based on inflation. That's not what's gonna make the community happy. You have to give the community a reason to want better gear that fixes not only your financial problem that you're either running into now or very slowly approaching it also fixes your player engagement problem there was other games or there are other games was like they're all gone no there's other games like world of warcraft when the dlc drops the big expansion drops and everyone's playing they're playing for like two three months and then there's a nine-month downtime, and, and sure, there's sub-seasons, but like, let's be real, when you look at the player count graph, the first three months of a WoW expansion are going to be significantly higher than the other nine for the year. And it's the same for any game. It's the same when a new Final Fantasy DLC drops. It's the same when a big expansion or change happens in like RuneScape OS, like when, when a community-driven change, when, when like there's a big one, right? Like then everyone joins up and, and wants to play. That's when you see a boom. But what held people playing BDO 24-7 was open world PvP, was GVGs. Period, bar none, that was your end game in BDO. And I found coming back to the game, BDO's completely lost its purpose. Like, the reason you used to grind back in the day is so that you had enough gear to not only defend your spot, but also take that spot if you need it, right? Like, that was a part of BDO, and, you know, Marnie Realms did diminish that a bit, where it made it to where it's like, okay, well, you still need to be able to defend your spot, but you get an hour of freedom, which, honestly, that's perfectly fine. An hour was fine. But then with the most recent changes where they made it from one hour to like 12 hours a day, there's, there's not really any purpose to fight anymore. Not that the systems are in place to allow you to fight if you wanted to anyways. So, obviously the open deck changes I'm not a big fan of, and the node war changes also after participating in the new system I'm not a fan of. And the reason I'm not a fan of them isn't because, oh, I wanted to go open world in PvP, right? I'm a returning player. My gear sucks. I'll get shit on the second that I try to go into open world PvP for uncapped content. Like, that's just how it is, right? But... At least that was a purpose to grind for, right? Like, there was at least a end game for BDO. But what BDO actually ended up doing, instead of replacing the PvP endgame, because they obviously want to take more of a PvE direction, they just took out the PvP endgame and didn't put in a PvE endgame. And that's the biggest problem with the game right now. We don't have an endgame for PvE. The only endgame from PvE is, like, being on Xbox and achievement hunting for different treasure items. That's your end game in PvE. And that's not enough to keep people playing. Yeah, it was always the PvP that was holding the game together. Now, don't get me wrong, I love PvE. Like, PvE is extremely fun. I can PvE for 100 hours and not even feel like I'm dying or anything inside, right? Some people don't have nearly that much tolerance, but I like Korean MMOs and I find it fun to grind. But at the same time, I need to be grinding for something. I need to be grinding towards something. And it can't just be number go up, right? And, once again, I love this game's combat system. Like, I, I may have not said that yet, but I, this game's combat system is amazing. The animation for this game is amazing. And the muscle memory this game offers is honestly on par with some of the best fighting games out there right now. And that's where I feel a lot of the community's frustration is coming from. Like, we see an amazing game. It has the building blocks to be the best MMORPG on the market. And arguably, playing the game, fluidity-wise, in my opinion, it is the best MMORPG on the market. It feels good to play. It feels good to control your character. It looks good when you're playing. It's just missing a chef to cook it. You know what I mean? Like, we want to play this game. We want to join back with our old guilds and tell our friends, like, oh my gosh, Black Desert Online's popping off again. Everyone log on. Guild wars are happening left and right. We're able to do these crazy new grind spots where you need, like, 500 
200 DP and every floor gets harder and harder. We spawn in a maze and we have to group up by slowly clearing through the maze and fight the boss at the end and then go to the next floor. Like All these cool like crazy concepts that games like RuneScape OS have already implemented and we just don't have it, right? We don't have a Destiny 2 style raid that makes people want to come back every once in a while. Sure, we have the dungeon system, which is, you know, it's okay. It's new content. People want the new dungeon. I get that. But at the end of the day, like, it's not really going to be what brings people back to BDO. It's not going to be what gets people to log in who haven't logged in for a year like me. Players need a real goal. Like, my number can go up, which is cool, I guess. But number go up, you're comparing it with who, right? You can't really big dick AP anyone, right? Because you're not fighting anyone. And you can get a little bit of extra silver per hour, but the only reason you're getting extra silver per hour is to grind at a spot to buy more gear so you can grind to get more silver per hour so you can get more silver per hour. And it just goes on forever, and there's no real point, right? Which pretty much invalidates silver, it invalidates a lot of the high-end accessories, and we've seen a total collapse of the player base and market because of this. And they've tried to already self-correct Debo accessories. Where are you going to grind in Black Desert Online? There's only two places. You're either grinding for a treasure item, or you're grinding for Debo. And if you're not doing that, you're grinding for silver so you can buy Debo while the Jay's Hammer is still on the market, right? That's just how it is. And if you look at Korea right now, Korea is min-listing Pendebos. NA is not far off from that, right? Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tank. Debos are going to tank. And because Debos are tanking, people are going to save their money and buy Debos. And there's not even really a point for any of the old pet accessories, right? So... I did mention they have made efforts to try to revitalize some of the older accessories. Like the Tungrad set effect, obviously that was a good change, it was a W change for Pearl Abyss. However, it's not anywhere near good enough to justify over Debo. When we get the changes to 200%, some classes might run it as kind of like a meme and capped content, or even in non-capped content, depending on the state of the game and where it goes. But realistically, they've only done it on Tungrads, right? A change they could easily implement, so this is like a, a, an offering solution, not just Doomer, I have, I have solutions. Make a set effect for cadre rings, right? If you wear two cadre rings, you get plus 30 hidden DR. Obviously the number's not mapped out to be balanced, but just for example, plus 30 DR. And then add a grind spot where if you don't have 500 sheet DR, you're gonna get one shot from their most basic move, but hide in that grind spot a treasure item or a chase item like a flame or something where people have to go there and try to get something. If you give players a motivation to go to a new grind spot, they're going to go to a new grind spot. You have to give them the motivation though. If you want players to buy yellow accessories and not completely treat them like blue accessories, which it appears like you guys want because we are giving Tungrad set effects, then you need to give set effects to all of the other accessories. Make like Ruby Manos Coral Earrings or whatever they are, right? Make the the DP earrings, if you wear two DP earrings, you get 500 health as a set effect. Do the same thing for Eye of the Ruins, or make Crescents give you plus 30 demi-human damage if you're wearing two of them. Do something like that to where every single yellow accessory has at least a purpose. Obviously, you have to make Debo accessories be the best accessory in the game, to an extent. Because they're the most expensive accessory, people have already invested hundreds of billions of silver, even trillions of silver, to get them at Tepen. So you can't invalidate their work. People will be so mad. They were mad when you gave away free pen black stars. They're going to be significantly more mad because the Debo grind is so mind-numbingly painful. So you have to make them the best in the game for AP, sure, whatever. But you at least have to make the other accessories viable because as of right now no other accessory is really an option there's new players that aren't even picking up jatina pen and going right for tet Debo. like that's the world that we're in right now we have items like godier sitting on the market at tet min or not tet uh, duo try and actually no even tet mi- listed at min not selling just sitting on the market because the news released for sovereign weapons and ar has the sovereign weapons now and we can't really do anything with the old god here so it just sits on the market and it dies and it's the same thing that's happening with the yellow accessories and there's just so many ways that you can solve it you know people joke around about using chat gpt but you could easily use chat gpt feed it some of the problems that players in the community are saying on the reddit and on community discords 
in over Twitch and YouTube, right? And just let it run. It, it'll find solutions, right? Well, how do you fix God here? Allow them to turn it to a Tet Black Star plus some liquid silver. Or, you know, give them some Agris levels for Pen Black Star through the new guaranteed enhancement system. I mean, there's any, I mean, you can do anything, right? To make people still have value out of an item like that. And the fact that they've let these items just sit and continue to just die and have no purpose. Like, we still have Grunel armor in the game. We have Heave that's not just the helmet for evasion players, like full evasion cap Andes, right? And god forbid you're trying to enhance a pin black star armor or use the Arshan materials to upgrade a tent one. Like, why, why are these in the game? And if they're going to stay in the game and we're not going to get rid of them, then why aren't we adding set effects, giving them fringe use cases, like I said before, like the accuracy accessories? Even if there's a DR or an evasion meta, you could still have a grind spot. You could even be a grind spot that already exists. You could turn an old grind spot that no one's going to anymore into a grind spot where you need 1300 accuracy to kill the mobs, but hide a treasure item there to justify the change, right? Because you can't just, oh, well, now this mob does a billion damage and you need 500 DR. No, you have to do that and also upgrade the spot. And hopefully the developers have a better idea than what I'm just coming up with off the top of my head, but the players need a reason to buy these old accessories if they don't want to be completely invalidated. And it's up to the developers themselves who get paid a significant amount of money to decide and implement these changes to do so in a way that's actually engaging to not only the mid and entry game player base, but also the late game players as well. And please keep in mind, new players, returning players, all of the things that I've mentioned up to this point in the video realistically aren't going to be something that is going to affect you for 1,000, 2,000 plus hours into the game, right? And I know a lot of people say that about a game, right? Like, oh, you know, it's really good when it gets to end game. And, and a lot of people in the MMO community, because of that, really only think about the end game being the only thing an MMO has to offer. But that's really not the case for Black Desert Online. This game is about the journey. It's about the adventure, the discovery, discovering new grind spots, finding ways to optimize your class and grind efficiently, embracing the community and the world around you. This game offers that in a way that MMOs just don't really do anymore. This game is not a theme park MMO. If your pure goal is to get to endgame, then you're missing out on what makes it great. The entire game is the endgame in a way that's very similar to RuneScape. Could you pay someone to play on your RuneScape account or bot to reach level 99 strength? Yeah, sure you could, but it completely defeats the purpose. And it's for that same reason that I don't recommend anyone tries to really pay to win in BDO either, which I know hearing pay to win is a giant red flag for players, and there are some good things on the cash shop that are a massive quality of life boost that I would recommend players to get, tent and higher tier pets and maids being one of them, but pretty much every MMO on the market has some sort of RMT in it, either be it subscriptions for games like World of Warcraft or RuneScape, or direct money to comma conversions in Dofus. But honestly, Prolibus does a pretty good job at making the cost to pay to win outside of the reach for most players, to the point grinding an hour in the game is not only better for you as a player to learn new spots, gain the experience, but also logical financially, right? There's some games where if you, you know, swipe enough money, you can just get all end game gear and it only costs two grand, but Pearl Abyss has priced it out to where if you want to pay to win, you're going to need to refinance your house, and even then you're only getting maybe a 10% edge, if that and the players that have just been playing for a couple extra months are going to be there anyways. The really important things in BDO can't be purchased on the market. Things like the archaeologist map, the compass, the telescope, these really cool treasure items that when you have them and you show them off, it's an impressive feat. And that's very similar to World of Warcraft with their mount system where, although you can swipe your credit card and sell a bunch of WoW tokens on the market to get gold, the really rare items that people value the most are not marketable. And BDO's pay to win is very surface level in that same respect, where paying to win really takes a lot of the fun out of the game. You know, you skip entire grind spots, entire areas that are filled with unique mobs and environments. Playing this game honestly feels like you're dropped off in a fantasy world and you're able to do pretty much anything. You want to be a pirate and sell the seven seas 
Go ahead, build a giant battleship, spend hundreds of millions of silver, billions of silver to upgrade your ship so it gets more cannons, shoots faster, level up your sailing so you're able to maneuver your boat in more unique ways, hire better workers for the bartering system so you're able to trade more, set sail and explore all of the islands throughout the world that are completely undiscovered, while at the same time hunting sea monsters and ghost ships. When you're bored, go ahead and pull out your fishing rod. Sure, you might not make as much silver per hour because the fishing system is a little bit dated and the prices of fish are not quite up to scale to the level that grind spots are in current day. You're still able to title hunt. You're still able to go for big prize fishing to catch bigger fish. There's things in this game that, although are a bit dated, can bring a lot of joy to a subset of players that doesn't even know the game exists. You know, I have a buddy Charles and I tried to get him into BDO and he made the grave mistake of selecting the Land of the Morning Light as the starting quest zone. Which, by the way, Pearl Abyss, wee woo, wee woo, emergency alert as well to any newer returning player, never ever in your wildest dreams under any circumstance do a main storyline that is not the original first the first tab option that says recommended for new adventurers do not do mountain of eternal winter do not do land of the morning light and if there ever is another one or a missing one never do those only do the original one that says recommended for new players all of the other main stories, you're just going to be spam clicking T and R, T to auto run, and R to skip through the dialogue for six plus hours, and it totally burnt my buddy out, and he won't even try the game again. So please do not fall for the same trap that my buddy did, because I guarantee you it will completely ruin your impression of the game. You are going to rarely fight outside of instances. You're rarely going to interact with the open world through the other storylines, and the open world that you do interact with is only in a single region, which really does not give you a perspective of the game even as a Tuvala Timmy. And honestly, these campaign options should be locked for any player that hasn't completed the original main story at least once. There's also been a significant amount of quality of life changes that have occurred over the last couple of years, right? They added the fast travel system, so you don't have to auto route, AFK, walk your horse from town to town anymore. And the way they implemented it is honestly really cool. It's almost like an Alice in Wonderland style system that doesn't break immersion, which is very impressive for a fast travel system. It's honestly one of the only examples I can think of for a fast travel system that doesn't break my immersion. With that update through the Magus, they also added universal storage so you're able to transfer your materials from one storage to another from any storage as well as grab materials from any storage you don't really need to use something like maids anymore if an item or two is located in a faraway storage you just go to any storage npc and you can pull your items from there after completing the quest line more recently they did a life skill overhaul where now all life skill level is shared between all of your characters so you no longer need to have something like a farming alt or alchemy alt parked out on one character splitting your accounts Life XP, I know me personally, back in the day, I had five badges above my head for gathering alchemy and farming, and it was a big pain because I had to leave my grind spot so that I could go and do the life skill because I still wanted to get all of those medals. But after the update, now I can have one alt parked on my farm as well as one alt parked in my house to do alchemy and cooking, and all of their EXP is shared with my character as well, which is a nice change for those who are into life skilling, more so on life skills. They also added the tool bag, which more so recently got turned into a menu itself, so whenever you go to use a tool now you don't have to manually switch from a fluid collector to an axe or do a pickaxe it's just all automatic you equipped it in the little ui menu and the game just uses the tool that it needs to some other changes if we go a little bit farther back are the addition of family inventory for storing all of your food and elixirs on one little inventory tab which is then shared amongst all of your characters and depending on how long you've played they've also made some drastic changes to the tag system where you're actually able to use your main gear on a different class as well as try out other classes on a trial character, which is great for a newer returning player to find a new class. They've also significantly reduced the reliance on the pearl shop through pets, inventory, and generous events. And then the biggest quality of life change being the guaranteed enhancement system, which eliminated the extreme case where some players were failing Pen Blackstar over a hundred times. Through the new system, after a certain amount of attempts, you're guaranteed to get the upgrade. These are just the main changes that I've been directly affected by, but there's honestly been so many of them over the last few years. If anything that I've said so far used to be a deal breaker for you, and it sounds like they've improved, I really recommend giving the game another chance. With that being said, it's more so the very end game of BDO that's lacking a 
drive. It's lost its motivation. The things that we want as endgame players in regards to PvE is complexity and grind spots like we saw in Gyphon Underground, right? Like, that's a really fun mechanic. Even Gyphon Upper back in the day with how the mobs almost function like gargoyles and you have to walk by them and they start to unstiffen and then you have to make sure as you're pulling the group that they don't hit you because then they're going to be locked in a long animation. It was stuff like this that made it very engaging and very fun and that's what we as Endgame players, we want our grind to matter. We want to get better gear so that we can go to these cool new grind spots and get a unique experience out of them. In Olin's as well, which for some reason got a nerf to its complexity, where there was a damage manipulation mechanism that was pretty engaging and kept players interested in the spot. With all that being said, what I personally want to see out of the game is more grind spots with unique mechanisms like the ones I've already mentioned. A few other examples might be something like a zone where the mobs inflict heavy bleeding damage, and if you don't interact with the mechanism that cleanses your bleeding, or have maybe high evasion, for example, where you might be able to automatically dodge the bleed damage attack or something to that regard to give evasion a meaning in PvE, then you'll bleed and you'll die and you'll lose crystals. And, and yeah, sure, people are going to get upset, they're going to lose crystals, they're going to lose billions of silver, and that experience can be frustrating. But at the same time, people value that in the future, even if they don't in the present. Some of my best memories in BDO from a PvE side of things are dying in Gyphon Upper and Lower because I didn't do the mechanism right, and my death actually mattered, and because it mattered, and because I lost money, I strive to get better at that spot. I think it's important for MMOs to have death matter. I know a lot of players get upset because they lose crystals when it's something that's not their fault, but if the mechanism itself is something that you failed, and because you failed the mechanism and the blame was on you, there should be a punishment, and that punishment may be a couple hours setback from your grind zone. But that will result in you becoming a better player so that you are prepared for harder and harder grind zones as they release. Putting a decent barrier to entry for APDP for grind zones is important. But it can't be the only thing that limits a player from going to one spot or another. With a higher gear requirement, the complexity of the spot should have an equally proportionate difficulty increase as well. When you compare that to the Ulaquila region, most of those grind spots are not very difficult. Many of them don't even have a real mechanism at all. And the only thing that's limiting a player from grinding there versus grinding in Elvia zones is their gear. Some other PvE mechanisms that we could potentially see is something like a boss putting up a barrier and if you hit the boss while the barrier is up they regain health or they buff up enemies around them. Anything that will add some level of depth to the grind zone will be extremely beneficial for endgame players in the long run. It's something that they want and they might not even know they want yet. So in addition to the PvE changes that I've already mentioned so far, I wanted to kind of go into some other old content in BDO that could also be easily revitalized. World bosses as a whole right now are pretty much uneventful unless it's Garmoth, Vel, or maybe Nover. And with Land of the Morning Light Part 2, I'm sure people will also show up for that world boss. But in reality, most of the world bosses, you think Dim Tree or Bag, like those uh, Red Nose, those not quite uh, world bosses, they change the terminology for them, like region bosses or whatever. Uh, but you have all of these different bosses, even Kudum is pretty dead now. So you have all these bosses that are in the game and have are fully coded and, and animated and have items named after them, right? And, and at the time of their release, when a new boss dropped, they dropped a new boss item, like it was a, a very unique thing. But now that the game's advanced to the point that it has, we're more so into upgrading boss armor, and we get it through alternative sources than the boss themselves. So they've lost a little bit of their purpose, or, or most of their purpose, unless they decide to reward something very unique, like a Garmoth Heart that can go into an offhand and awakening weapon, um, or something like the Vel Heart, which replaces the terrible Alchemy Stone system that is somehow not updated in the game since release. So you have those items, and they justify showing up to boss fights. But a lot of the other boss content in the game is completely dead. It's been dead, and people that run it run it for a barely any silver. And 
it doesn't really have a purpose other than like, oh, it's kind of something to do. There's no real drive to go to those places. There's no real drive to do gatekeepers anymore. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, th- these are things that are, are so old or even not even in the game anymore, right? Like, to, to the point where it's like, why are we ignoring these things? Because these things can be easily embraced. World bosses, for example, in BDO PvP, one of the biggest things that you can do to give yourself a little bit of an edge is getting the furniture buffs. At least it was back in the day, right? So you could get like an AP, accuracy, DP, all these little mini furniture buffs that you could bring into uncapped PvP, and it was something to do, right? So currently in the game, furniture buffs are just not the easiest thing to acquire. A lot of them are just max pre-order and they sit forever to get. So why not make the reward from world bosses every single the first of the week or first day of reset you have a hundred percent drop rate to get a boss furniture item why not do that why not make it more realistically probably a, a weekly quest you can accept and you choose one world boss to do and you get whatever furniture buff that was for the week it's already tied to world bosses it will get people going to world bosses to do world bosses they might not even have done before But on top of that, you need to add some form of horizontal content as well. Because just something like a furniture buff isn't going to be enough to incentivize most players to go, but it'll at least incentivize them enough as a, hmm, well, at least I could get a furniture buff, or at least I'll get a furniture buff if I go. But what I'm really technically going for is that chase item, that treasure item. So my suggestion for world bosses, beg for example. Not a lot of people might really care about what Beg's gloves look like on your character, but some people do. Like, you could make one of the bosses drop the Geoth Helm. You could make the Dim Tree region boss drop a Dim Tree armor. That's a costume that you can actually equip and it's just as good as a cash shop item, right? So you could have these cool kind of like nostalgia items that people are wearing and you could also add titles to the bosses, right? You could add even colored titles, like a chased colored title that you have to go for or maybe you have to get all of the original boss armor pieces like a Geoth Helm, a Beg Glove, a Dim Tree, and a Muskin Shoes. You have to get those from the actual mini world bosses and if you get all of them you get some sort of title like classic or something like that and as a colored title you can have all of these cool little kind of chase horizontal progression treasure item that people will go to the world bosses for already and in the worst case they're gonna make 70 mil because they got a furniture item to take a step back to the pvp side of things i wanted to mention a topic that choice actually brought up on a recent stream that he did We need to revitalize the Arsha servers, and the way I would fix Arsha servers is definitely controversial compared to a lot of the other opinions that I've heard, but personally I would increase Arsha servers from instead of one Arsha server to more like six Arsha servers, keeping one of them to where you have anonymous, and on that anonymous Arsha server, like the most recent podcast from Blue Squadron, Yam Yam had a really good idea from Korea where that server is solo only. Sure, people are going to abuse it and group up or be in a guild but not actually party and find ways to abuse a system. They're going to find a way to abuse any system, but that would start an entire new subset of players. Players that want to go into a proper 1v1 open world server. Then you have five other servers for old Arsha, and on those Arsha servers and the anonymous server, you need to increase the drop rate to about 600%. So you have all of your other 300% from your other buffs, and then you get a 300% buff just for signing into that server. And the reason we need to do it to that extent is there's so many ways to get item drop right now, either through event, owning a castle, or just having J scrolls or something similar, right? There's so many easy ways to get to 300% that you never actually have to touch the Arsha server. The rewards on Arsha are so minuscule that players really only use it as a small tiny boost to their silver per hour. Like that's the situation that the Arsha servers are on right now. And obviously events will change that here and there, but if you make a change like I'm saying, where you just give a flat 300% plus all of your other buffs on Arsha, you'll actually encourage people of all gear levels to attempt Arsha. So you'll still have some of the players that, okay, well, I just want the extra drop rate, and they switch on, and they switch off, and they run away out of any sort of adversary. But if you have 
300% extra drop rate on six servers. What that does is it doesn't limit only the super hard cap players to Arsha so they can make the most silver per hour and bully every other player in the game that even desperately tries to show up. With six servers, you actually introduce enough of a spectrum for players to join where you'll get mid game players as well as hard capped and soft cap players. The best thing you can do in BDO is make sure that soft cap and hard cap players are playing on the same server. Because what that does is when a hard cap player goes and kills a soft cap player and just shoots them into the ground unless the soft cap player is very very good at PvP and happens to have a class that can actually damage the other class like they're not fighting a berserker, right? So in a situation like that, if you're able to get stomped once or twice by a hard cap player and then maybe get one kill in here or there and you're like, oh man, I need to get my gear up. I need to be able to fight that guy. My gear's not quite good enough, but I was good enough to get him in one combo. But, you know, if I had a little extra gear, I would have been able to SA trade way better and I would have killed him. Like, that's the kind of content that BDO used to have. And that's what a lot of the veteran players want to see out of the game still. And this implementation of multiple Arsha servers will fix low-level guilds being bullied because they shouldn't be on the server in the first place. One of the things I really appreciated about old BDO is where you could grind wasn't only limited by your AP DP, but also the community. It was supply and demand. And if a grind spot was really, really good, and your gear was really, really bad, then someone with more gear will go and kill you and that's their grind spot. If you don't like it, swap channels or join a guild that's willing to get into GVGs. If either of those options don't work for you, you just make less silver per hour. Risk versus reward. But now there's actually a solution for players like that. You have Marnie Realm. Honestly, it should only be one hour, not 12 or whatever, right? But even at the time that it's at currently, players that can't fight in those high level servers will just go ahead and go and sit in their Marnie Realm normal server. And players that want to risk half of their grind hour just to PvP to own a spot and then being able to invite your guild over to take over a channel so that you guys are making the most money on the server. That kind of content is super fun, competitive, and would bring back a lot of the old BDO flair that the PvP community is missing right now. At the same time, it would offer more PvE buffs for the PvE community to try and get better trash loot, while also challenging them to a little bit of PvP content, pushing them outside of their comfort zone. When I mentioned six Archer servers before, that was more specifically for NA. Each region is obviously going to need its own determination of how many Arsha servers they need, which is why we need some sort of dynamic channel system in the game that looks at the average player count for the week, potentially the highs and lows as well, then disables and enables channels based on that metric. They've already implemented a similar logic for Node War, which although undertuned there, could still be repurposed for the channel system. It should not prove that difficult if done so during the regular patch cycles, as no players would actually be logged into the channels being adjusted, and it would just actively increase the perception of active players, even during dips in populations that MMOs naturally go through during content cycles. I can only imagine how much a region like console would benefit from such a change. And PA could still be proactive and enable extra channels right before a big expansion. This change would also help alleviate the lack of resource scarcity that the game is suffering from right now. With the amount of efficient silver per hour grind spots that exist in the game today, it just sounds like a net win all around. It's also worth pointing out, using something like Steam Charts, which although is not the most accurate player count for Black Desert Online, seeing as a lot of players are logged in through the client itself, it can still be used as a general guideline, right? And we can see there was roughly 60,000 active players on release, which is slowly dropping down more towards 10,000 players. However, the number of channels that exist today are actually more than we're at the game's peak. Although NA is alive and well, feeling fairly healthy on every channel, it's not anywhere near the golden era that it used to be, with other regions being in a much worse state. And realistically, it's only a matter of time until all regions start feeling that way as well. As the game's world continues to grow and PA introduces more and more instance content, players keep getting spread thinner and thinner. And keep in mind, all of these suggestions realistically are not something that PA is interested in listening to, and that's been made very apparent to not only content creators, but the community of NA, EU, KR, console, god forbid, right? So this is the state that we're in. And the player base isn't happy when they genuinely want to be. We want to like your game. In fact, we do like your game. We just don't like the direction that it's going. 
Like, why are we not listening to the players? When you check Steam charts and you see that the player count is steadily decreasing, and that doesn't immediately throw some red flags, that's scary. It's very scary, and we've known that the developers have never really been interested in listening to feedback. Keep in mind, all the way back in the day, like when the game first first came out, with ghillie suits as one of the big, oh my gosh, ghillie suits are out, is it pay to win? Oh my gosh, I'm going to go on the forum and write a paragraph because I got ganked by Baca on Hex Sanctuary. Like, yeah, just get over it a little bit, right? When we compare it to the issues that we have now, it's not even in the same hemisphere right and even though it was a silly situation nothing really changed then nothing's really likely to change now until they decide to wake up pa really needs to have some sort of wake-up call to realize that the main game for their company is starting to fail guilds are dying on every single region Guilds are what keep a community together. Guilds are what keep people logging into BDO, saying hi. Guilds are what make people come back to the game to join their old communities. When you start losing guilds, you start losing the players. And when you start losing players, the game starts to fall apart. For example, Chonation in NA died. Barcode in NA died. I don't think anyone's heard of Snake for years. So these are just a few of major guilds that were pillars of the community at one point in time and they're just gone that's just na that happened to eu months ago so it's honestly not that surprising that we're in the state that we're in right now for bdo and people that have been playing the game for five plus years on and off know that BDO developers have never truly listened to the community. They've always made changes based on what they think will be the most effective, and for the most part, it's kind of worked out. Up until last year, I think the community was relatively happy with the content we had. Everyone still wanted better PvE content, but there were kind of blips in between the years where we felt like we got enough PvE content to be happy for a while. The problem is with the direction of the game changing from a more PvP to PvE focus without a real PvE endgame to fall back to, it leaves these really empty windows in the game between periods of content that didn't exist prior. Because of all the guild drama that you would have due to fighting for a limited amount of resources in the world, seeing as there weren't nearly as many grind spots, and not nearly as many grind spots were actually good silver per hour, where nowadays you can pretty much go anywhere, you can be completely uninterrupted in Marnie Realm, so why would any guild be mad at another guild? Unless it's something that happened on Twitch. And people have already mentioned doing some sort of guild tag system that would indicate you're a PvP guild, which without having the tag would either limit your rewards or ability to participate in them at all. But this topic has been covered pretty much at nauseum with variations between player to player of how exactly they would solve it. Honestly, in my opinion, if we just buff up Arsha server to the point that the rewards are so good that all of the guilds are going there anyways, Arsha server's rules are unrestricted, and I think that's a good enough solution as is. But I'd obviously like to see a global change for the regular servers as well because guilds are what make BDO what it is. Speaking of Node War, I'm not really going to cover the topic that much. It's solutions have been offered by players much more knowledgeable than myself like DeJules, Choice, and other people that have been active in the Node War Siege community for the last few years. So I'll let them handle the topic and I'll include some of their video links in my description below. That's just where it is. That's where the game is right now. Guilds aren't able to build bonds through adversary because there is no adversary. And because of that, we're left with a really shallow game. Something that even though a lot of PvE players might not realize that they want, right? PvP being something that very small percentage of the player base actually does. But it's the mentality and the psychology that goes behind grinding and justifying to yourself that your hours and hours and hours that you spend running in circles will have an effect on what you can do in the world, how powerful your character feels in the world. And when you totally get rid of that, because PvP is not a thing anymore, open world PvP, uncapped PvP, and when there's not enough content for uncapped PvP in the game, you don't feel 
value in the gear that you have. You know, as someone who works in an IT consulting company, we provide value. That's what we care about. But Black Desert Online is not providing value. So you can give content all you want. But if it's not actually worth anything to the people you're providing that content to, you really need to take a step back, assess the situation, work with your community managers from various regions to find a way to provide value and implement content and changes that your community will actually enjoy. And the saddest part is, I don't think Pearl Abyss truly understands the impact that each community is going through around the world right now. No one here wants to move to an inferior game like Throne and Liberty. We don't want to play Albion Online even though it has a very similar open world PvP system that Black Desert used to have. What we want is for the game that we played, Black Desert Online, to hear us. To hear us before there's no game left. All of the videos about doom and gloom, even this one right now about, oh, the game's dying, guilds are dying. It's not, you know, three years ago on Reddit when they made some sort of small change that made two or three players unhappy and they've made four Reddit accounts and are doom posting. This game is in the lowest state it's been since release. And there's nothing really over the horizon that appears to be able to save it. So that's why the community is coming together, and even me, someone who hasn't made a YouTube video in, what, four or five years? And has never really wanted to be like a YouTuber, is making this video now. I really hope this video reaches somebody with a bigger audience than me. Someone that's ingrained in the community to this current day. Video is special, man. Video is this amazing game. That when you log in for the first time and you see the world and every single grind zone has different mobs and they're not just reshaded like old World of Warcraft or something like that, right? They're not a cheap, perfect world MMO. Every single mob type group has their own unique art style and combat animation and each region is completely different architecture. When you think about other games, they're not even remotely close to what video has accomplished for world building. It's so rare to get a game like this, let alone an MMORPG like this. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This game's world is beautiful. The graphics are next gen. Playing your character is like riding a bike. I took a two year break, and the second that I touched my keyboard, I immediately knew how to play my class. I didn't know if I held W and then left clicked, I would do one move, or if I held shift and then Q, I would do another move. I just instinctually knew I need to do my stun, and my fingers did the work. There's no other MMORPG that does that, period. So let's bring it back. Let's make video great again, right? We need to see the developers make community-driven changes. Old School RuneScape was incredibly successful with that methodology, and we have multiple regions with community managers that can easily provide feedback from the player to the developer. The options are there, and the ball's in your court, Pia. We're doing our best to stick in there, so try to meet us at least halfway. That's all I have to say. See you in five years. Common Samar Online